women how to strength train and why it's so important as a middle-aged woman to strength train. Hey, hey, good morning. Um, just a bit to start. It's a little chilly, a little chilly in my garage right now. Uh, I had the heater going, but I did not expect that temperature drop. <laughs> I did not know. I thought it was supposed to be warm this week. I thought I had seen like seven degrees on one of the days, but no, it's cold. So let's get started. Let's get warmed up because I got to like literally literally warm up here. We're going to talk about movement and menopause and why that's so important, but what kind of movement is most important in menopause. And that is strength training and that is resistance training. And those of you who hate cardio, that's great news. And those of you who love cardio, that's heartbreaking, I know. And I'm a cardio junkie, you guys know. I'm a long distance runner. Um, Long, 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 long distance runner, 200 milers. I've done two 200 milers at this point. I love to go out for a long, and that's a, that's a lot of cardio, you guys, and cardio is not the best thing for um, us middle-aged menopausal, perimenopausal women, <laughs> much to the dismay of any long distance runner or long distance athlete in general. Um, but to those of you who don't like to work out or don't like cardio, which most people, I think most people who don't like to work out don't like cardio more than they don't like lifting weights. Is that a fair statement? Let me know what you think. Is that true? If you do not like to work out, <laughs> if you do not like to work out, you might not be joining me right now because you might not be interested in workouts if you don't like to work out. But if you do not like to work out, um, Probably you dislike cardio more than strength training. Um, if you like to work out, a lot of people like cardio over strength training because cardio gives you the high. Running especially. Running gives you the high. Strength training doesn't give you a high. What it does do is it makes you feel strong and powerful. That is what I do love about strength training is I feel this sense of invincibility. <laughs> is that a word? And um, and there's no better way to feel confident in yourself, I think, than to strength train. Um, I think even when you are looking to go through a weight loss process or journey or transformation, um, you can build a lot of confidence in yourself before you start getting like real results um, because you can see gains in the weight room in the in the in the gym, and so. Um, if you are somebody who is endeavoring upon a weight loss journey, um, I, I really strongly encourage you give lifting weights a try. Give workouts a try. So um, I do these three workouts three times a week, 9.15 a.m. Eastern Time. I don't even know. Are we on, East, are we on Standard Time or not Standard Time? Because I, I don't know, but we're, we're on, I'm in Ontario, so if that helps, I'm in Ontario, and it is 9.18 right now. So 9.15, three days a week, and if that does not work for you in terms of live, like like real time, um, I upload all of these workouts to YouTube so that you can do them at any given time that's, um, that works for you. I have one week, Jen Sharp, my, my dear friend who does these at some ungodly early time, so she does them the next day. Um, maybe for you, you need to do them in the evening, whatever. Um, I will also say I love to work with you if you're beginning, if you're just new to, to working out. I have a special um, place in my heart and soul for you because I want to help you get to where you want to be. I want to help you have hope. I want to help you believe in yourself again and I want to pour into you, and that's what I try to do on these sessions, is I try to pour pour into you, whether it's through knowledge, um, whether it's through insight, or whether it's through one of my favorite things, which is mental um, the mindset. Uh, we're nearing the end of the first round of warm-up, and so I want to tell you that I'm going to add a hop here um, and increase the intensity just a little bit, and if you're a beginner, um, you're going to keep it at marching. And so I, want, I like to say this at the beginning of every workout, to modify anything that you need to, um, or change anything that you need to, to take breaks anytime you need to. Um, when you're beginning, the first battle that you're going to have, I'm already warming up, <laughs> the first battle you're going to have is with your mind. 
And when I first started these sessions, um, ooh, coordination, um, I had sort of hit like a rock bottom place for me. And the biggest adversary that I was up against was my own head, my own thoughts, right? My own um, negativity, <laughs> resistance. Um, my thoughts saying like, who do you think you are? Like, you can't do that. Um, who do you think you are? You don't work out anymore. You're out of shape. Um, fears, right? Fears of how hard it was gonna be. Fears of not being successful. Fears of the shame I was gonna feel because I had come from here to here. Um, all those things, right? And so you're up against all of that in the beginning of your, your journey. And the first thing you have to do is break those walls of resistance down and get to work, get to business. And so that's what I want to help you with because I feel like that is something that I am good at because I'm always doing that in my own head, in my own self. I'm always trying to break those walls down and get, get to work, get my husband always says to me um, that I'm emotional about everything, and I am. Um, I take everything personally, and I do, and I worry about too much about what people think, and he's right. So he's bang on with all three of those. And so every single day is a process of detaching emotion from things that, that don't need to be emotional, right? Which is most of the things that we do in life. They, we don't need to attach emotion and feelings to everything. It's um, letting go of what people think of me because I have no control over that. And what was the third thing? Um, emotional, it's what people think. I forget. Anyway, I do lose my train of thought a lot in these <laughs> sessions, so I apologize in advance for that. But um, And so I know that many of you have those same issues. I'll, you know, you, you don't have the confidence, you don't have the belief, you, you maybe don't even have the hope anymore. And I'm here to tell you that I can help you get to where you want to be um, if you want that. The one thing, the one thing I cannot do for you, I cannot help you with, is I can't want it for you. You have to want it for yourself. So this is a high intensity round here we're going into, round three. And again, if you are new, this is your first session, or, or perhaps you're, you've been on vacation and you're just getting back into it, it doesn't really matter why. If this is too much for you for whatever reason, maybe you've had COVID, maybe you've just had baby, modif modify anything. Your first goal and the most important thing for you is to show up, is to start. Right? And so anything that you need to modify or change or tell yourself to get yourself started, to get that foot in the door, is what you need to do. So you do whatever you have to to show up. Some of you might just do this warm-up with me. This warm-up is 10 minutes, and I've had brand new clients that are like, what? Like, that's the warm-up? I just can't then just do that 10 minutes is better than no minutes, right? Getting started is better than not doing anything. Even if you do the first round of warm-up with me, that's a start, right? And any effort towards your goal is taking you down that road, right? It's, it's a road that you're going down. It's a different path you're choosing, and your goal is to stay on that path and stop jumping back over to that other path that you were on that was taking you not where you want to go, right? <clears throat> you want to go to Florida <laughs> from where I live. You need to head south. If suddenly you find yourself going north, you need to get turned around going south again. And that's the bottom line. So every now and then, the road is going to turn, and you're maybe going, that's it. This is a good analogy. Sometimes I, sometimes I come up with good ones. You know, sometimes, like the road doesn't go straight to Florida. Like you don't take a road. Like we're, we're not birds, we're not planes. We're not flying straight to where we wanna go. But the road is gonna curve. And sometimes you have to go back north to head back south, right? Instead of around, you know, some construction. <laughs> you gotta go around 
like, you know, I don't know, whatever. That's okay, just, you just wanna make sure your net, your net travel is settled, right? So your net efforts are working towards your goal, not against your goal. And if you can, um, actually, I wanna talk about habits today because I've been thinking a lot about habits. I, I was in a very creative mood yesterday. I, I typed up and I wrote, like typed, not typed, <laughs> typed. <laughs> uh, so I did it on my phone, obviously. A whole bunch of stuff around, oh, I just was feeling really creative. I was, I was thinking about habits and unconscious behaviors. So let's get back to that in a second. Just want to grab some water. So if you're joining me, make sure you have some water handy. Um, one of the goals for you that I'm gonna throw out to you is I want you to try to drink a gallon of water a day. This is supposed to be full, but it's not. It's half full. I like to try to drink this by the end of my workout, but. We're working on upper body today. Um, so, <coughs> I'm gonna use my bench today. If you're at home, well you're probably at home, if you don't have a bench, that's okay. You don't need to have a bench to do what I'm doing. You can do this on the floor. You can also use um, like a sofa, like take the cushions off and use that hard part underneath. You could use a coffee table if it's sturdy. Um, often I'll use a cooler. <laughs> um, Yetis make great workout benches. The only problem with coolers, you wanna make sure it doesn't have wheels because <laughs> that won't go very well. And, um, and honestly, you could do this without a bench altogether. Now, if you're new, I want you to not focus so much on the weight. I'm going to grab more water. Give me one second, you guys. that when you don't have water you get extremely thirsty <laughs> that's what just happened I was like I know I got a rash in my water and, and all of a sudden I'm really thirsty so if you're new you're just getting started I want to remind you that what you need to do initially is battle your mind so just being here is, is good enough and I want you to not um, push yourself to the point of unpleasantries either now or tomorrow, right? So I don't want you to feel the need to go to, to get all your fitness in the first workout, right? Your goal is little steps consistently made over time. And so in saying that, I want you to go really light with your weights. Now, if you've been doing this with me for a while, um, your seasons, you know the movements, your body knows the movements, you know you're doing it with right form. I want you to go heavy, and I'm going to talk about that in a second as well. So i got to talk about habits, and i got to talk about um, muscle for middle-aged women and how it helps us with A, weight loss, and B, well, well-being and longevity, we need muscle. Okay, so that aside, I'm not going to get into that, because what I really focus on is what everybody cares about is weight loss. Yes, give me some loves, give me some hearts if you are in your middle age years and you're trying to lose weight right now, or if you're in your middle age years and you've gotten fluffy suddenly. And you haven't changed anything, everything's still the same, but suddenly everything's getting a bit fluffy. Like that was me, okay? All right, <clears throat> so we're gonna be doing rows. Couple of keys, I want your tailbone extended, so not tucked, but extended. Chest is out. You're gonna pull the weight up to your, to your thigh. Okay, so we're gonna go for 10 on each side. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Yesterday was legs, today's upper. <coughs> Habits by definition are unconscious. You don't know you do that. You don't know you have that. So you scratch your chin every time you're thinking. Um, you know, you your tongue hangs out <laughs> when you're concentrating. My son used to be like, <laughs> it was actually really funny. I don't think he does it anymore. Um, those are habits. You don't know you do them. You have, I can guarantee, we all have them. I have them, you have them, we all have them. A collection of habits. 
status right now, if you're not where you want to be, if you're feeling like you're off track, if you're feeling like you're doing all the things but not getting the results, right? I hear that all the time. I'm doing everything right. I don't understand. I'm not getting the results, but I'm doing everything right. If you're doing everything right and not getting the results, then you're, you're not doing everything right. It's the bottom line. But you might not know what you're not doing right because it's all wrapped up in your habits, um, which, are, which are unconscious behaviors that you're not really aware of. of, of aware of. Both. Aware of. Okay. Um, what do I want to do next? Dang it, I put my bar away. Okay, I'm going to use this big bar, and we're going to do rows, bent over rows like this. So if you're using a kettlebell or dumbbells, you can do the same thing. You're just going to be bent like this. Um, I'm going to use my barbell, which I thought had weights on it, but it doesn't. Whew, this thing's longer than I thought. All right. Okay, so I'm going to be bent over and I'm going to be rowing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Next up, we're going to do shoulder raises. Actually, we're going to do front ones today. Um, I've moved my weights around, and then they're over here. Again, you're going to go light if you're new. You can even do no weights if you're new, which is going to seem kind of silly. But remember, you got to think, what do I got to do today to show up again tomorrow? Because today, today is not good enough. So it's a good enough start, but... You can't just show up today and go MIA tomorrow um, and think you, you got to where you could be, right? So what do I have to do today to show up again tomorrow? Let's do three more because I can't count at the same time. Two. So if you're thinking about unconscious behaviors, behaviors that you are not aware that you have, um, I think it's key to figure out what those are. And the only way you can really figure out what those are is you have to Face yourself in the mirror and you have to, sometimes it takes actually talking to somebody else. Um, but I, I like to think of a good hard reset. So I like to think of the analogy of cleaning my closet out. It's like, you don't know the clothes you have. You always pull the same things out of your closet. You always pull the same items from the same places and yet behind them or deep in a drawer, there's all these other items, right? Those are your, your habits, <laughs> right? Taking up space in your closet. Okay, so we're gonna do um, one, two, remember chest is out, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so that's round one. We're gonna do three rounds like that. Um, so drinking water as we're going, remember our goal is a gallon of water a day. Um, it's a habit I picked up from 75 Herd this past summer. My daughter and I did 75 Herd together, and that was the hardest part for me. <laughs> Honestly, it was the, the water and the reading. And I read every day, and I drink a lot of water, but I don't drink that much water, and I only read two or three pages before I fall asleep. So it was really hard for me to get those 10 pages in every day from 75 hard. But this is kind of one of my points is when you do things, um, you, your habits will stick, right? So if you, now it, it works both ways. My daughter ordered a really delicious birthday cake last week because it was her birthday. Yes, yeah, she ordered her own birthday cake. Um, she was wanting something specific and didn't want to, leave it to chance that somebody else would screw it up. So she ordered it herself. Um, so initially it's like, well, I don't like eat cake. I'm not, cake is not my thing. Fries, yes. Can't have fries around me. Or I can't stay out of them. But cake, I'm like, eh. But I thought one little bite won't hurt, right? Like, I'll just try it. Which I shouldn't have. Because it sucked me in. I was, I like, it's funny how, um, what's the word, palate-pleasing things 
really palate-pleasing things, get you addicted like that. So I haven't been able to stop eating this cake. So now this is a habit. It took two times eating that cake before that was now a habit for me. This is how fast habits can stick, and they can stick for, for your good, for the well-being, or they can, they can stick against you. And they're both equally as powerful. Often we think our bad habits have more impact on us, but really it's just that we are more aware of our good habits. Like we're like, oh, but I do this every single day. Why isn't it working? And it's like you're doing all these things that you're unaware of, but that's why it's not working, right? And so it's important to do a self, a closet clean out of your own personal habits to figure out what you got still left in the back of the closet that you need to pull out of the closet and not put back into the closet. And that's kind of what I did this year, is I, I got really, I tracked my food for the first time ever. Um, I wrote everything down. I counted it. That might sound really anal to you. Sorry to use that word. Four, three, two, one. Um, but the, the reality was your results come from where you put your focus. So if you're trying to get results without putting any kind of focus or effort, concentration in, you're not going to get it. You don't accidentally get results usually, right? Not the ones you want anyway. <laughs> okay. Ten. Ten. Nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, oh, two, one. And so the key, the key to making it easy, right? Like sometimes we think it's so hard to get those results. It's so much work. Like how many of you? have ever worked towards something where it's like you just feel like you're push, push, pushing. Like you're working against flow the whole time. I feel like weight loss is so often like that. You're like pushing up against this wall of resistance, um, struggling to get to where you want to be. You feel like there's so much effort and very little result. And the reason, part of the reason is because um, you, you can make it come easily. You have to change the programming, essentially. So you have to change the, the mental programming. And that was what happened this year. <coughs> um, you have to have a good proper why. You have to have a good reason why you're doing it. I really don't think being skinny and looking good in your clothes is a like, good enough why for most of us. Earlier we were talking about emotions. Like most of us are emotional. Eating is emotional. Um, our our self-image is emotional. Um, you got to make your emotions work for you, and you got to get emotional about something else, right? And so, what makes me emotional, what, what gets me in all of the feels, is um, not just for myself, but for you as well, is feeling good, quality of life, like not being inflamed and sore and bloated and tired and lethargic and um, drained and moody. <laughs> Those things get me in the feels. Looking skinny and looking good in a bathing suit and in my clothes, oh, do I want that? Like, I'm human, of course I do. But does it get me in the feels? No. So what gets me in the feels is, oh, a glass of wine or my daughter's birthday cake. Five, four, three, two. Food is emotional. You have to have an alternate place for your emotions other than food. And for me, it was, I don't want to feel like a broken down old tin lady that is just sort of hanging on and waiting to die. Like, I don't want to feel like that. I want to feel like I, I want to thrive and feel vibrant, and I want to feel optimal. I want to have tons of energy, and I want to, my mood to be great, I want my sleep to be great. That gets me in the feel. So when I look at that cake or that wine, and I know that that is going to take all those other things away from me, and it's also going to give me all those things I don't want, all of a sudden I'm not so emotionally attached to the, that thing anymore, right? Okay, head on the other side. 10, 9, 8, 
Instead of thinking about cutting out junk food, I'm focused on what foods am I trying to make sure I'm getting in, and I forget all about the foods that I'm not eating, right? So if I have a list of things that I'm trying to tick off each day, um, I'm so focused on that, I don't notice the stuff that I'm not getting, right? Okay, 10 of these rear um, flies. Three. Four, five, focus on using your back. Five, four, three, two, last one. Okay, so that's the key. That's why I want to talk about habits. Now, how about strength training for menopausal weight loss? A lot of us think, and I, I was one of them, that. All right, we're gonna do bench presses. So we worked, we just did that last set was working on our back. This next set's gonna work on our chest and our arms. Um, I forgot that you guys didn't say anything from my shoulder lifts. Okay, I'm gonna do a set of those now. I totally, I knew I'm skipping an exercise. Betty and Darcy are like, what is she doing? Okay, if you're joining me live, um, I do these three times a week, 9.15, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Eastern Time, Toronto, Ontario Time, <laughs> if that's helpful. Um, I do them on TikTok and I do them on Facebook. And then I upload them to YouTube. So if this is not a good time, you want to do this workout later, um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's hundreds of sessions on there for you to choose from. Um, all the way back to my beginning, <laughs> when I first started, I was about 20 pounds heavier than I am right now. You can see the transformation. I lost count. So that's one that we, we, we owe ourselves another one of those sets because I missed it. Um, so we're going to incorporate those into our first round. So we're going to start with chest presses. Um, so you're going to go light, and you can do these on a bench or on the floor. You don't need to have a fancy bench. You can do these right on, on the floor if you, if you don't. Um, if you're following me on TikTok, I encourage you to follow me, get hit, hit the follow button um, so you can catch these, but I also do cooking, and I'm going to be sharing some healthy treats for the holidays um, over the next couple of weeks that I'm really excited about. I'm excited about making them. I'm going to make them with my son. So hit the follow button so you don't miss out on those. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, so that's our chest press. And we're going to add another chest exercise to 
chest fly. Again, you can do these right on the floor. You don't have to have a bench. You don't have to have fancy equipment. If you're new, um, you might even just go through the body movements without weights just to get your body used to movement, right? It's key to just introduce movement and range of motion to your body. Um, just, oh, sorry, we're doing flies. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Why is strength training important as a middle-aged woman? I mean, there's a, I'm going to keep these here, there's a million reasons, um, to be quite honest. But the number one reason that, or the reason I'm going to talk about today is pertaining to weight loss. So if weight loss is something that you're struggling with as a middle-aged woman, um, I want to preface this by saying most <laughs> women in their 40s at some point struggle with this shift in body composition, right? All of a sudden, you're fluffier, <laughs> rounder, you're, put, you're making fat deposits in places you never did before. We're doing bicep curls, so one... Two, three, four, five. We need five more. Um, and so a lot of us think, and I thought this up until recently, that our metabolism slows down. That's not exactly right. Our metabolism is still the same level of efficiency that it was before our body composition started to change and we started to get a bit fluffier and carry less, less lean body tissue and more non-lean body tissue, what happens is starting in our 20s or 30s, we start losing muscle. Like our muscle starts to, we, we, we experience sarcopenia, which is the loss of lean body tissue, the loss of muscle. And what happens is we're gonna do skull crushers today and that's the fourth one of this set. And then we're going to add those shoulder raises one more time just because we missed them in the first round. Um, so, one, so 10 of these. So what happens is our muscle breaks down. We, we lose it. We so then carry more, um, less lean body tissue, more non-lean body tissue. And the reality is that muscle, this is another reason why you want to build muscle, if you're new, you know, we're gonna get, get you there. You want to build muscle because muscle burns more calories. It's a higher, um, has a higher metabolic demand, I guess, let's call it, um, than non-lean body tissue. And so the less muscle you carry, the less calories you're gonna burn at fat. So it's not that your metabolism went down, it's just that your body composition shifted and you don't have enough muscle to burn the calories that you, you used to, right? And so we want to mitigate the breakdown of the muscle and then we want to rebuild muscle. It's really hard to do. Um, those of you who are in your middle age years working on that, you know. And so you don't have to be afraid. Okay, we're gonna do 10 on each side. You don't have to be afraid of, of building too much muscle because you're, you're kind of, work, you're, you're on an uphill battle as it is to build muscle, so you're not gonna overbuild muscle. Um, so that's why it's important to learn to lift um, weights, resistant training, and maybe lift heavier weights so that you can help your body pr produce more muscle, um, or at least slow down the breakdown. And that's why it's also really important to eat protein. <laughs> <laughs> um, protein and, and resistance training are the two best things that you can do if you're in your middle age years and you're, and you're trying to mitigate that weight gain. Um, okay, so we're done with those. <laughs> and we're going to go back to your chest press. I'm going to grab some water because I'm trying to get through my water. <laughs> this is only a liter. Um, but to get, to get my gallon, I have this like schedule that I try to spread out with. Uh, Betty and Darcy, are you guys still doing a gallon a day? Do you still do a gallon of water a day? So I'd love to hear how you do you break it down, or do you just like keep 
keep drinking until your jug is empty. All right, so we're back to chest press. So um, we lose muscle as we age, which is why our body becomes a little bit fluffier, which is why we need to eat more protein because our body just doesn't synthesize it quite the same or as well. We need to eat protein periodically through the day, 20 to 30 grams every three to four hours, three to five hours, right? And we need to lift. So that's my pitch for lifting. And this is why, you know, I'm doing everything I can think of to reach as many women as I can to get them lifting weights. Because I know, um, I know that it's, it's not always easy as a female because a lot of us, like, just frankly didn't grow up lifting weights. Maybe we never learned. Two, three, four. I'll tell you a funny story, too. Um, I'm a personal trainer. <laughs> um, and up until really this year, I hated lifting weights. <laughs> Actually, I hated, I hated working out, period. Um, working out was not my jam. I did it only because, um, well, for one, I was vain. <laughs> I wanted the results, but B, because I'm a runner and I needed, um, I need, I needed to to be able to run. Like you, you just, you get to a point in your age where you can't run without strength training. So I begrudgingly did my strength workout to get me through my running. And those of you who've been doing these sessions with me for the last two or three years, you know this is true, because I used to always talk about it. It's like, every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, I would groan to myself, thinking, ugh, it's workout days again. <laughs> and um, just this past year, I got really addicted to it, because I loved what it was doing for my body. Um, I loved, for the first time ever, I loved having muscle. I kind of got addicted to that, and so now I love lifting weights. Um, but I was talking to someone yesterday, because she, she said, I hate the gym, I absolutely hate it. And I said, well, there's hope for you, because I hated it up until this year. This year, I, I've grown to really love it. Okay, bicep curls. So. I, I do think, I know I said this already, but I do think that, um, Feeling strong. I didn't used to be able to do bicep curls with this weight, by the way. Um, I had a surge in strength. These 15s were always enough for me, and I'm needing to get some new weight to accommodate my gains. <laughs> and so that's exciting. Um, three, two, Two, one. I think having, I think weightlifting is one of the best ways to increase your confidence and your, your image of yourself um, before the physical changes start to happen. Because you know it gives you a lot of confidence to think, hey, I can lift that or I can do that, right? All right, skull pressures. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to reach. I, I set a goal. You guys, I thought this would, you guys would like this. I want to reach 10,000 women. I was sitting this morning doing my mindset stuff, doing my kind of journaling and <laughs> listening to my Google music and asking, you know, the universe for guidance. Um, and this came to me. So my goal is to. Enroll 100 new women into the five-day drop this month, and you know I thought, well, that's super lofty. And uh, Bob Proctor always says, let's do four more. That's not what Bob Proctor always says. <laughs> but they, Bob Proctor always says, make the big look small. So compare a big goal to an enormous goal, so that big goal looks less daunting. So I set this goal like I want to find 100 women to work with in the five-day drop program in December. And 
you know, it sounded like a big goal initially, but then I thought to myself, 100 women is a drop in the bucket of how many women out there that are struggling. So I thought, I need to increase that goal to 1,000. Well, this morning I thought, you know what, I'm going to make it a 2024 goal. And Darcy and Betty, you're both in, and Jen, I think too, you're, you're all in this five-day drop group. I'm going to make it my 2024 mission, my goal, to get 10,000 new women into that group. Um, to really make an impact on menopausal midlife, weight loss, but well-being as well. Obviously, well-being is always most important. And so, I increased my goal to 2024. Now, my 100 women in December, because um, I thought if I could do 100 women every month, that would be... Wait, 100 times 10. Oh, oh my. My math was all wrong. <laughs> I was just doing public... Public math here, 100 women times 12 months is, is, what is that? It's only 1,200, isn't it? And now my stomach is like, whoa, what were you thinking? 10,000. Because I was thinking 100 a month to get into my 10,000 goal. Okay, well, we're not going to downgrade the goal because we never downgrade our goal. We just adjust. We just adjust. Okay, because I'm not going to say, oh, no, never mind, I don't want to help 10,000, and then I'm only going to try to help 1,200. Oh, bad math. Don't do 5 a.m. math. That's the lesson from that. All right, so anyway, 100, there you go. I just made 100 look really, really small. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Never downsize the goal, just adjust the plan, right? Okay, so the plan has to change. Okay, we're still aiming for 100 women in December. That's still the December goal. Just checking the time here. We've got three minutes to finish our set. So 100 women in December is still the goal, and then we've got to, we've got to readjust our goals for next year, for 2024, to hit 10,000. So, the goal is to build that community, the, the 5 day drop community, to 10,000. Um, I'd love to simultaneously see our move community grow um, and my YouTube channel grow. Four, three, two, last one. So there you go. I've said it publicly. <laughs> Okay, and then we got to do, what are we missing? Skull pressures and bicep curls. Okay, let's finish off our bicep curls here. One. So that's why I'm live on TikTok with these sessions now. Um, every day is to find women <laughs> who are looking to thrive in midlife years, who are looking to raise their bar, right, demand more for themselves, um, believe again that they are worth more than just settling for wherever they're at now. I think that's the important thing is it doesn't matter where you're at now, there's more for you, right? It doesn't matter. That, that road to self-improvement um, is, is, there is not a final destination. Right, final destination is is like the end, so to speak. Right, there is no end to self improvement. So wherever you're at right now, I want to encourage you to ask more, to look for more, to demand more because you are worth you are worth more. Um, and you know, we get this one life, <laughs> we have this one body. We can't we can't trade in at the end of the lease for this body. This is the body you have for your whole life, and so. You want to get to a place where you have the utmost respect and gratitude for this body. And, and what can you do to take better care of it? If you take better care of your house and your car than your body, if you take better care of your shoes and your purses than your body, um, we need to change that because your shoes and purses are just material items and your body is where you live. Nine, eight, Seven, 